great to have your company for the weekly this Friday, the 30th of April. I'm Jessica Ramirez, a senior market analyst here with Bell Direct. Well, the Aussie share market hit a 14 month high this week, putting the ASX 200 just 1.3% off its all time high. Now, a couple of key broad themes in the market are playing out that I encourage you to consider. Firstly, investors are buying the dip, finding the most value in energy this week, pushing it to become the best performing sector after energy took out the gong as last week's worst. Now, the energy sector still lags on the ASX this month. It's down 3.3% because the US is pivoting, I guess, to make America green again. However, Goldman Sachs expects the oil price to rally expecting oil demand to grow because mobility is picking up, particularly in the US, Israel and the UK. So Goldman Sachs expects the oil price to surge 20% in the coming months and hit $80 US a barrel. Side note here, Wally Parsons WOR historically pays the second highest dividend in the energy sector and WOR was upgraded this week by Macquarie, a new $12 price target for Wally Parsons. Keep in mind though, the market is really awaiting Wally to win new contracts and also gain renewable energy market share. Now the second theme emerging is that the mining sector is gaining muscle. The mining sector, it's up 8.3% this month. What's fueling mining stocks and the sector alike? Well, a couple of key factors. Firstly, Australia's iron ore exports hit a record high in March, up 21%, and that helped the iron ore price to near a decade high. And that supports stocks like MIN and CIA, which have seen some of the strongest gains on the ASX this month. And secondly, copper exports, they're up 62% in March, and that helped hurl the copper price to a record high. Does the copper price have more to go? Well, Goldman Sachs thinks so, expecting the copper price to run 11% in 12 months, largely fueled by EV demand. So keep an eye on copper plays like OZL, SFR, AIS, CYM and HCH. Thirdly, commodities gaining momentum are also in the lithium sector. Now, the commodity price rose to a near three-year high on EV demand, supporting the likes of American Pacific Borites, ABR. They rose 20% this week. That was the biggest gain among the top 500 stocks. Lithium play, Vulcan Energy, VUL also did well too. Now, the third overall market theme emerging, insurance companies. They're in full flight because firstly, insurance claims are down, meaning insurers are paying out less and keeping more of their money. Plus, people are taking out more insurance policies because Aussies are back at work. And secondly, insurance companies are also making more money from the money they invest because bond yields have bounced off their lows and are up at two-year highs. And there's expectations that bond yields will rise again, as the Federal Reserve Bank Chair alluded to. So these key elements support insurance companies' earnings and profitability. Now, with insurance companies, we're also seeing them upgrading their profit guidance levels, and investment houses are secondly uh, upgrading their insurance outlooks as well. So both of these two key ingredients drive share price growth. Now just look at NIB Holdings, NHF, on the A6 this week example. It was the best performer up 14% after they upgraded their profit guidance as policy numbers are up. And secondly, Citi, JP Morgan and Credit Suisse then upgraded the stock. But now let's completely change pace to help you develop, I guess, a stock selection process to build your investment portfolio. Firstly, when considering a stock to invest in, you might like to ask yourself three simple questions. Firstly, is the company that you're looking at in a growing industry? Secondly, is the company growing its market share and its customer base? And does it have a competitive advantage? That's difficult to replicate. And thirdly, how are the company's financials? Are they growing? Remembering earnings growth traditionally drives share price growth. So to help you I guess develop your own research. You can use a resource that's available to build direct clients. This is called the Strategy Builder. It allows you to scan the entire market to find what you need in a very short period of time. So today let's screen for insurance stocks. Remembering there's a lot of hype around future earnings growth in FY22 because the insurance sector these conditions are improving. Um, so I guess here we just want to deselect the industries we don't want. 
and leave the industry we want. Then I want to look for insurance companies that are growing their financials. Let's add in a criteria, scanning the market for companies with growing earnings per share, that's known as EPS. Then let's look for companies that have got a history of growing their profitability. This is known as return on equity. And thirdly, let's look at price to earnings. This is simply a company's share price divided by their earnings, which is what investors receive in way of the dividend. Now, we're searching for lower PEs, price to earnings, because this traditionally represents greater value. So the strategy builder has scanned the entire market and found these stocks that met that criteria. We can see Suncorp looks like it's, I guess, the cheapest stock when compared to its earnings, looking at the PE. But Suncorp also has a history of not growing its earnings per share. On top though is Medibank. That's trading with a price to earnings ratio of 23 times earnings, but it's got a history of growing its return on equity and growing its earnings per share. So that's how to find stocks using the strategy builder. It's simple, but for a full demo and how to use a strategy builder, see the link in the description below. But please let us know what you wanna hear next week or if you've got any questions, also leave them in the comments section below on YouTube. Thanks so much for your company for the weekly. I'm Jessica Ramirez with Bell Direct, but from all of us, have a happy and safe weekend. Bye for now.